meeting the Arch Town Council order at 7.03. Um, yeah, I don't bring this one in. Roll call. <laughs> George Knoll. Eric Parton. Sean Harley. Angela Resendez. Eric Jones. Mason Maloney. Show that Eric Sneed is absent. Or not Eric, Randy Sneed. <laughs> 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 So I rise to the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you
lower rather than you know, increasing. And as we looked at the state of Indiana, we know that we rank 39 out of 50 states as some of our health factors. And in Marshall County, we slipped from 61 out of 92 counties down to 64. Um, so our numbers are, are getting worse instead of better, despite the good work that's going on within the hospital systems and the initiatives that they're trying to do. Um, so when we talked about you know, what it's, what it's going to take, um, we, we were looking for something that was system-wide, community-wide, that had measurable results and that it was proven that it was working in other communities. We don't want to be first out in this. We want to know what works in other areas that are similar to us. And um, so that's the first we heard about Blue Zones was actually through um, OPRA, through our representatives down there that were contacts in the STEM project. And uh, they mentioned it and we started looking into it. So Blue Zones was actually started about uh, 20 years ago by Dan Butner. He was commissioned by National Geographic to look at communities across the globe that had a high concentration, higher concentration of people that were willing to be 100 or more. And um, to go to those communities and learn what he could about what was different about their lifestyle and their culture that, um, that was increasing their longevity. So he did that. He came back and he wrote several best-selling books. But since then, they said, all right, let's take that, see what we can do to develop a framework that helps communities across the U.S. do the same thing, adopt some of those things that help us live longer, healthier, happier lives. Um, so that's where Blue Zones began. They started with a community much like ours in Albert Lee, Minnesota. Um, population is relatively the same. Demographics are a lot like ours. Um, manufacturing was um, key to their communities and so on. And um, they were the pilot community and they've um, had some pretty incredible results with it. Um, so we were interested in learning more. We first had Tony Butner come in and talk to us, it's Dan's brother, come talk to us in the it was February 14 of 2020, and um, we went to Swan Lake during a winter advisory day. So oh, was, yeah. <laughs> was it there. was bad. Every time I've been there, it's been a winter advisory yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About 120 people that signed up, and I think most of those folks made it that day. So. And, um, and we were encouraged. We did a survey afterwards. We learned a lot, both before the program and during the program about what Blue Zones was all about, and we were encouraged when we did a survey that said um, 88, 80, 90 percent of the folks there wanted to learn more about it and do something in Marshall County that was going to start to help um, improve our health outcomes. Let's look at this. Um, so we took that and we decided um, to interview, well, COVID hit right after that, so that kind of stalled things for a little bit. We picked it up later that year and decided that the next step would be to interview four communities that had gone through the process. And we wanted different stages, people who were at different stages of it. And all of that's in the report, including the links. You can listen to the recordings of those um, interviews um, that we had. And we wanted to ask the hard questions. What would you do different? You know, how, uh, what kind of outcomes are you having? Would you do it again? All of those kinds of things. And um, overwhelmingly, all of those um, communities said, um, if we had it to do, had to do it over again, we would start earlier. We would invest more up front. And um, every one of them said, and if you think you can do this on your own, you're wrong. Um, so, so that was interesting. And uh, after that, we decided we got sponsorships together: uh, United Way, the St. Joseph Health System, and Silla College Community Foundation. Um, Dr. Stilson, Dr. Schumacher, um, they all supported um, a community readiness, um, the community development readiness assessment process with Blue Zones. So we hired the team to come in in 2021. And um, part of the process is it was that team came in, we wanted to learn more about the Blue Zones process, but they also wanted to learn about Marshall County. Because the way this works is a lot like Stellar. They, they don't, you don't just pay them the money and then they give you the designation, you have to earn it. Um, so it would take um, three years and eight months for us to earn that designation. That's what we found out through this process. But there's an evaluation that takes place with that community uh, development readiness assessments. They're checking us out too, because they're not going to sign a contract with us if they don't think they're ready. It doesn't do them any good to see a community fail, right? Um, so they were testing us as much as we were testing them. Um, we went through all that. Um, focus groups, keynote speakers, um, CEO executive briefings. We did 
uh, three days worth of activity with them, and then did some virtual things um, after they left. We did some additional vir uh, virtual focus groups. They even brought in a built environment um, expert. Mark Fenton spent time in each of our communities a, a week or so later. Um, just spent some time with us looking at the built environment, making some suggestions right off the bat on um, things that we might look at to improve um, our communities and how we move more naturally. Do we have sidewalk ordinances? Do we, are we enforcing them? Do we have trails and things like that that, that are helping people get where they need to go? You guys have a lot of that stuff going on. Um, so um, that was part of the process, and obviously they came back and they said, yeah, you got high marks from leadership. We looked it at the Crossroads team, you know, the, the um, stellar group, officially formed as a regional planning team at that point. Uh, we made sure that they um, got real familiar with each other, Blue Zones and the Crossroads team. And um, so high marks and leadership, they saw it across the county, you got great representation, we think we're ready. Um, so, um, they gave us uh, a proposal to look at, and all along we've been hearing about ready, and we thought, well, that's an opportunity for us to not only lo uh, invest our local dollars, but have some support and help, right? Um, so we've been working since then to prepare ourselves for our ready grant application. And um, that's what we're doing right now, is looking for local match funding to help support the project and move forward with this next stage of it. Um, so, I, uh, Blue Zones focuses in on three different areas, policy, um, people, and places. So policy is real key. We've got funders that are waiting in the wings to see what kind of support we have for policy change in Marshall County. And i got to tell you, having uh, cities and towns and the county step in to support this with, um, with some funding, that sends a huge statement to those folks that want to know if we have an appetite for policy change. Um, and we've already seen some of that across the county. Um, we're just real excited about the opportunity to bring in more experts to help um, along with that work. They focus in on places where people gather the most. So um, in this process, we would work to see that um, companies that are interested in becoming Blue Zone certified um, have a menu of options that they could choose from. It's not one size fits all, but it's here's, here's some options we think could help you become healthier help your employees to become healthier, and as a result, build this healthier workforce. Um, less absenteeism, increased productivity, longer um, time period within the workforce. Um, that would be the goal with it. Um, and reduced healthcare costs as a result. And it was interesting as we talked to, the, oh, I forgot, we also visited Albert Lee, we took a bus trip there, and we talked to the community leaders who were very generous with their time and spent um, a full afternoon with us of answering our questions after we toured the uh, community in the morning. Um, <laughs> but they are alone, um, $8.6 million annually in savings with their employers who are seeing a reduction in smoking rates and having that kind of significant impact um, on their health care costs. Um, and our smoking rates are pretty similar to where theirs were when they started. Um, and I think the one thing I left out too, I want to Make sure you know, when we talk about this kind of change, I think sometimes it's intimidating. We think, wow, it's got to be, you know, 50% of our population doing something different. No, we can do this with 15%. That's all we need in order to see a significant change in some of those numbers. That's the projection. Um, so that feels more doable. But anyway, Blue Zone certified companies, um, they work with the employers. So let's see what that looks like. Schools, the same thing. So that's where a large percentage of our population go each day, right? Grocery stores, restaurants, we look to see if um, grocery stores have put in a Blue Zones aisle or, or section, uh, restaurants maybe Blue Zones <laughs> items. And again, making it easier for people to find those healthier choices and think about that as they're going about their daily, um, daily life. It's not about telling people you have to do this, it's about giving people general nudges all along the way, all sectors of our community moving in the same direction, so they're hearing it from, in, uh, from multiple sources. And then the people aspect of it is uh, really has to do with mental health. Um, that's part of our well-being as well. And uh, coming out of COVID especially, this is top of mind because we work with the um, Bowen Center and we know um, how long their wait list is right now. Um, we know that people are struggling. Um, and um, we have uh, suicide rates that are alarming. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on um, and um, part of what they do or what, what this process is about 
is about helping people identify what their purpose is, encouraging them to become part of a faith-based community. Um, and that's, all they, that's the only way they define it, because um, studies are showing that people who are regularly participating in a faith-based community um, live four to five years longer. Um, things like that. How are you connecting with people in, during your day? One of the businesses in Albert Lee, they put in pickleball courts and basketball courts so that their employees could get more activity before work, after work, on their breaks. But they also found that they were connecting with each other in a different way. They were actually doing some team building um, with that kind of activity as well. So it's all of those things combined, you know, that are leveraged together um, to make that difference. So that's a lot to take in. Um, and that's why I gave you that two-page um, summary. Overall, the cost for this is um, $6.1 million over a three year, eight month period. Um, it would involve hiring and training our local Blue Zones team. We're um, looking at five full-time equivalents for that. And it's really a train the trainer model. They probably don't, I don't think Blue Zones really likes it when I say that, but that really is what it is um, to me. It's a train the trainer model. Um, they bring in, um, we work with national experts to train that team. Um, they work both in person and virtually with them over that three year, eight month period. Um, they bring in, in addition to that, uh, national experts, 131 days of national expert time um, with us working specifically on issues we've de um, determined locally will help us most um, in this journey. And then we build um, committees, uh, volunteers on, uh, that are in committees to address the people policy in places. Um, and then building uh, awareness and engagement um, with volunteers across the county. Um, we are looking at another ready grant proposal, um, an e-hub in Plymouth that will provide a space, like a um, landing space for these um, Blue Zones team. Uh, we want a very visible place, and um, leveraging that in with a ready grant application for that e-hub uh, will help give us um, what we'd like to see there. So, again, um, over the next decade, they're projecting we could save about $196.9 million in medical cost savings, greater workforce productivity, direct and indirect benefits to the regional economy, um, positive media and brand impressions locally, regionally, and nationally, and additionally, all the communities we talked to said this framework um, opened the door to them for a lot of other grant um, funding opportunities as well. A lot like Stellar. We were told the same and we're seeing that um, come true with, um, with Stellar. Uh, the same would be um, hold true with this. This is what we're looking at. We've gone to um, Culver, Bremen, Plymouth. Um, Plymouth and Bremen have committed 25% um, roughly of their ARPA funds. Um, Bremen committed $100,000 to this uh, project. That's about 5% of their, no, sorry, a little more than that. Uh, about 10% maybe of their ARPA funds. Um, we have a proposal before the county commissioners. We've asked them for $525,000 in support. Um, the commissioners passed that on Monday. The council will review that next Monday. Um, so we're hoping that we can um, submit that along with the application, the ready application um, that will be due most likely on this project will be due in September. So, so anything you can do to help support this, we know that makes a big difference for the county council as they're looking at things. Um, so anything you can do to help support this would be appreciated. We know that 25% of ARPA is a big ask. It does not have to be that, that, that figure. It does not have to be that funding source. It can be over a multiple year uh, period if you, if you like. What do you think about that? I think you got everything. Uh, I don't know we're quite to that point yet. <coughs> I've talked with them. We're going through some financing stuff, obviously, because they are actually pretty hefty ready apps we're looking at. So I'm sure we'll get with them and we'll get back with you. Uh, like she said, this is going to be a right there doing a ready portion for this. Uh, those apps are due the 15th of August. So hopefully we'll get that portion put in with this. Uh, but by all means, I will, we'll talk some more and we'll get back in touch. Yeah. I have a question. Any, sure. I was just going to say, do you have any questions? I do. Um, the town in conjunction with our park department, which our park president is sitting down with Mr. Burkus there. Okay. Um, the last 
few years, we've applied for and received and matched several grants to get what we're getting accomplished today. Mm -hmm. And you know, everybody wants funding in this, and we put hundreds of thousands of dollars into our own community. And I just was wondering if any of that could be like in kind stuff. I mean, when we're done, this town is going to have walking trails that basically goes around this whole town. And I have just, you know, a lot of these grants and things and projects, you know, there could be in kind improvements in a community that could be applied towards these cost benefits. And I was just wondering if there's an avenue for that within this program. I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not for what we're applying for to get the team in here. Probably not. Ready grant though, however, ready grant. Um, anything that we have invested in blue zones up to this point counts toward the match. Anything invested since mm -hmm. March of 2021. Um, so every dollar that we spent on the community development and readiness assessment can. I don't know how far the lot of stretch that um, as far as because this would be like the programming on top of the trails and and um, uh, sidewalks and so on, right? So, I mean, as a town, as I look at it, we took an initiative upon our own community yeah. for ourselves to to build out to try to accomplish some of the same goals you're trying to accomplish with this program, and, and I'm just you know they kind of work together, and I, like I said I, I know we put out. Five hundred thousand dollars or better of our own money. I don't know what the exact number is, but to match grants to get to where we're at today, and you know that's a substantial investment just from our own coffers, let alone the investment from the other sources that gave us the grants. So I just, you know, I just thought there should be some kind of a work in there to, you know, as a whole community, the county involved, to tie that together somehow. I would that think. is a really good point, and something that will definitely make sure we draw out in the ready application so the applications that are due on august 15 are the capital expenditure projects this one will be considered programming so that application we expect will open up within the next couple weeks and with a due date we think of, of mid-september um, so we'll have a little bit more information on what they'll allow us to count and not count on um, the match but honestly i mean you've got a really great point i'm not sure that we've quantified for anybody all of the investments that have gone into laying the infrastructure um, for this we've talked about it we've presented when blue zones came in we had a slide deck that talked about every one of the stellar projects because of that um i'm not sure we added it all up it's a your stellar figure um so it's, it's certainly something we want to look up because we still have to get past the um South and Elkhart Regional Partnership application process too. We think there's a good appetite for this at the regional level. They're looking at it. They'd like to see, um, we've heard some at the South and Elkhart Regional Partnership talk about this being a pilot project for the region. Um, Marshall County can serve as that pilot for the region and maybe expansion of it later on. Um, and the thing that I love, that, that I wanted to make sure I mentioned too, you know, we talked about that national branding. Um, Blue Zones is gonna be, um, issuing another two, three books here shortly. Um, usually they do that stuff toward the end of the year to take advantage of the holiday market, right? Um, but after the first of the year, they're also releasing a four-part Netflix documentary series on Blue Zones. Um, the time for us couldn't be better because we'd love to be able to get a ready um, approval as they're launching that national um, attention toward Blue Zones because we can use that kind of energy both locally um, to help get people on board with this, these concepts, but also put Marshall County on the map as, as one of the latest, newest uh, Blue Zones communities. And there's up to 70 now across, 70 across the U.S. now um, that have gone through the Blue Zones process. I personally think it's a good, yeah. a good program. I, I know people personally that could come down here from Plymouth and from Walkerton even to visit our parks, walk on our trails fish in our pond, you know, just because it's convenient. Um, like I said, those are people I know personally. I know there's a lot more than that. And I just driving around checking out town the other night and I seen a boy riding on a bike with three fishing poles strapped to his back and this. I mean, community is using our parks and things that we've invested in here and it's great. And I just think that all this stuff should tie together somehow should have some kind of a quantitative meaning instead of just being a dollar value, you know. Sure. 
You know, one of the things when we walk, when we drove through um, Albert Lee, Minnesota, so one of the things that they did, and Albert Lee was the pilot for, for Blue Zones and they, 15 years ago. So this, they're in about the fourth generation of Blue Zones now. Again, not first community out. That's always good to um, learn from others. But as we drove through there, it was November, and we still saw people out on their trails, walking their trails in groups. Well, when they first started, they would do all these special events to encourage that kind of activity. They'd give them these you know, bright colored t-shirts, and they'd have contests on who walked the most, and all of that, or most often, um, and all of that. But what we saw was that that was still happening, and they haven't done those kind of activities for years. Um, but it's now happening organically, and that's you know that's the kind of thing that that we want to be able to build on, take up the infrastructure that's here, and just increase that awareness and opportunity for people in the community to take advantage of it. And by doing that, we're increasing our health outcomes. I have to say that this um, blue zones reminds me of a lot. I know. I think Mr. Masters back there might be able to remember too, but um, a few years ago we did, in Plymouth, we did a, a One Book, One Community. Okay. And the book was, um, and I pulled it up because this is what it reminded me of, but this is where you belong. And it was the, um, you know, the art of loving where you live. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the concepts that you're talking about are, can be drawn from that book too. Um, if you remember, uh, there were a lot of things that just, involve like a connectedness for people um, and just way markers and things like that. Uh, I think it's a good read for anybody who has any questions about um, along this line of what this might um, be about, but it ties in pretty well with it. Um, but that's what it reminded me of. I don't know if you remember that. It no was, any warning. Yeah, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, great book, but it also goes kind of along with that. So there's value in it, and it actually does. I think this ties into it and make people who live in their towns actually love it Increase the even pride. more. Yeah. yeah. Community pride, absolutely. Anybody else got questions up here? George? I sat through that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Did you show presentation? No. Well, I, I thank you for coming down yeah, and, sure. and spending some time with us. Um, I think uh, Mark was correct. I don't think we're quite ready to make a commitment to anything just yet, but uh, I do appreciate the extra information and stuff and uh, putting a face with what we're talking about. So. Can I ask a question? Yes. No wishes. Has the town committed its ARPA funds? Yes. A good share of them, yes, already have been committed to um, water. To water and sewer projects, EMS a lot of them mainly for Maybe. our new housing addition. No, no, we committed. Actually, we're almost out. We did a hundred, so we did probably a third of them to assist an economic downturn. There were some points there we could use. A majority of them are going. We're going to have a water, virtually a water expansion update. Uh, that we're going to apply through okra and we're going to use those as the matching funds we need uh, there's only certain things we could use those for we had already actually committed before she said that they just tried to use arpa funds because that was one avenue of getting funds for that uh, that doesn't mean that that's the only funding we had so i mean i forgot to change our plan what else <laughs> is available originally we're going to use it for deerfield well, I listened to that, for, well, uh, full disclosure, I listened to something on the radio about that. I gotta tell you, this project seems to be very low on specifics on what it does. It's asking the taxpayers of the county to put in 1.22 million. The ready grant, I think, is 1.22 as well. And I think the balance is allegedly coming from private, but the taxpayers are in first. The ready grant's not in hand, and there's no commitment I see from industry or anybody else. You know, I don't know, Marshall County Foundation's got $44 million endowment uh, <laughs> in 2021. The problem, with, the problem with the ready, this time around, I'm not sure why they did that, but they virtually, the ready funding is actually ARPA funds that the state got. So but that's still taxpayer that, money no, somewhere, isn't it? But in that, so the first time we got what you'll hear regional cities, you heard her made that comment, uh, the governor did the same type of thing, but that money was virtually I don't want to say no strings attached. So this time, so when we apply for these ready grants, the breakdown, as you said, is 20% municipal funding, 20% ready funding, 60% private funding. 
Well, that shoots a lot of my municipal projects right in the foot because I don't have, I mean, to do a park project, I'm not going to have 60% of private funding. So when you're saying, that's how they kind of have tried to get, like she's saying, uh, so your private funding in this could be anything from the hospitals to... Yeah, but who's committed to that? So Nobody's committed to that is my point. Yeah, and so just because, and I'm the same thing, I, I mean, I've got a ready project I don't think we're going to submit this specific one, but that was like $7 million. So our portion of it would be $1.4 million. So then I would get the one4 from ready, but the 60% of the private. I may not have that yet. I could have got awarded that. That doesn't mean that I would have truthfully followed through that project. So in that, in that funding, virtually, they said there'll be projects that are funded that may never come into fruition. Obviously, that's not what they want because they want the money to be used. But... But yes, yeah, so in this situation, I, I know they've spoken to many donors, but... But you also, most of the time, you're getting tangible assets. I, you know, I can argue that what you spent on the downtown yeah. square, maybe too much, whatever. But you got a building, you got something. Here, it's a framework, or, or some allegedly. That's all that's... I hear generalities. I mean, you know, addiction's a problem. Are you hiring uh, mental health counselors in the county? Are you going to have remote trailers maybe that you go to underserve? It just seems to be this brand. I'm, hey, we're a Blue Zone committee. <coughs> I'm going to bring in all this other people to build off because of our distinction. Sometimes that works, but it's not really putting boots on the ground. You know, are you giving to the food pantry? Are you giving, you know, I got to tell you, there's, you know, I think they, one of the Ochre projects or whatever, Culvert, you know, they did some sidewalk work. You know, it seemed like they grabbed some private property, but regardless, when I go to golf, I see more golf carts than I do people walk. There's some rich retirees probably walk. Should we all move more? We should. I think everybody knows what they should do. I mean, there's a lot of data out there. There's a lot of avenues to find out. But I mean, you know, if you're going to spend 1.2 billion of taxpayer money, you know, from the municipalities, and you're going to then you know, grant, I believe, you know, I think that's taxpayer money as well somehow. Whether it come from Nebraska, Allen County, the other is you got a lot of towns in the whole U.S. You've got 70 that have done this. That's like .0000. That's not a great track. I'm not aware of anybody in Indiana. Is there anybody in Indiana who's done it? This would be the first in Indiana. Quite a few in the Midwest, um, Iowa, uh, North Dakota, I believe. Um, interesting. Um, the Mayor's Council in um, last fall, uh, Mayor's Conference. Um, and again, this is for um, larger cities, but uh, they passed a resolution endorsing blue zones and the concepts and the frameworks for improving um, community health. And from where we said, I mean, we, we do United Way and Community Foundation, and um, I'll, t I'll tell you, I talk to people all the time that say, we're always fixing on this end, but what are we doing about the prevention? Um, and this is one of those opportunities to look at what we've already done with the infrastructure, but build on that that concept. Let's 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 see what we can do to improve it before we get to the chronic illness, because we're paying dearly over here, and um, and I know we're experiencing changes in in um, our healthcare network. Um, it's, so before we get to this place where we've got some really, really hard decisions to make, what are we investing up here what are in the preventative stuff? Well, we've got some economic storm clouds on the horizon. I, my understanding is it's a million dollars in administration costs. That's just for the people to come in and to hire the staff. That's what? before you even done anything. Is that correct? Uh, I'd have to look at the number, but that's over a three-year, eight-month period. But you're going to bring in some people from Blue Zone. And they're going to train the trainers, as such as said. I imagine, I believe, what I've heard, that's those salaries in mass are going to be almost a million dollars of the project. I'll look it up. Um, I well, what is it? Me. I didn't bring it with me. It's in here. Hang on, just it just seems like it's a lot of money at, at a time we don't have it. And it's not specifically targeting what needs to be done. I think that, you know, I, I think the commissioners or the council just uh, appropriated a freezer or something for the neighborhood center. It was $19,000. You're like, oh, it's quite a bit. But, you know, if they get a lot of turkeys in, the need is there. I get it. But that actually puts boots on the ground. That targets it, you know. And you do have a walking pass. That's great. But it's also nothing gets more personal than one's health. You, know? you want to run? You want to run? You no. Know, should we do better? We should. We know what we should do. But this just is like a framework. I, I mean, I just have never heard any 
proposal ever that never was specific. I mean, you know, and a, and a million dollar admin cost to start out to get off the ground, it just seems excessive. Thank you. I want to just that's where I was going. I just to kind of add to what you're. That's where I was going with my comment about. And you put in stuff a lot that we've you? already done. We yeah. put up half a million dollars, of our own money to match grants to put tangible assets in place that fits right into this. There ought to be some kind of credit for that. You would think that that's kind of where I'm going with that whole conversation. Well, so. It, in a sense of what Sean is saying, and I would have to agree with it, we basically have, we were ahead of the game and we're basically doing our own blue zone in-house by what we've done with our Parks and Recreation Department. I mean, not to take anything away from what you're doing, but what, what I'm saying is, I mean, I think that, you know, for some of the other communities that, that didn't move as quickly or as, as, you know, early on as we did, maybe they're a little bit behind where we are, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I think we've invested as a town and, you know, thankfully from the council, um, invested in our own community, provided those things, and, and actually we are drawing from outside of our community to, to take uh, part in those things. So, I mean, I think we've kind of done our own blue zone, if you will. So, I mean, without, you know, all the... the at all least the a portion of it, Ed. I, yeah, right. I agree with where you're going. And again, I mean, our, our projects that we've completed don't address everything that you're addressing as well, but I mean... And, it is a pretty good start, I think, for, for the preventative end as where we would, would want to be. And that's what gave us high marks in the leadership. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Dr. Schumacher, um, I was on the radio with him one day, and he said, um, he's been a supporter of this, um, you know, from the start, and he said, you know, I can reach 1,200, 1,400 people a year, but that's not going to change our health outcomes. And, and again, I, I go back to, we were really looking for something that had measurable results, and that's a part of this too, is okay, we've got this stuff, but then what, is, is it improving? I mean, we're still seeing the numbers go the wrong direction, so what do we need to do? How do we change that, that trajectory? What's it gonna take to do that? So, and then uh, Bowen Center. Bowen Center has been very supportive of this project as well, and our conversations with them, they want to become a Blue Zones um, company at every location uh, that they have in Indiana, 26 locations. Um, so they're very on board. They said they're actually redefining mental health in their own internal conversations because they recognize that our physical health has so much to do with our mental health. And so it's three of the locations they're now doing clinics where they bring in physicians and optometrists and, and um, um, and a dentist. So um, it's it, it's been an interesting conversation. It's hard to take two and a half years worth of stuff and present it all to you. Today. Well, we th we thank you for sure. coming down and presenting this to us, and uh, we will take it under thought. And I'm sure Mark will keep us up to date on some stuff there. But I I would like some quantifying answers to some of the yeah. questions that we've had here as a group and uh, one, one of go the down that road before we commit anything as a town, in my opinion. One of the things that we've done in other communities, so we're absolutely open, available to meet with you and have more in depth conversation about what that looks like. Thank you. Citizens input. Anybody? Ed? Paul? <laughs> <laughs> no citizens input. Old business, attorney report. All right, two things to cover tonight, guys. One, um, I'm going to take you back to the Beers property at 110 Logan Street. I know last meeting uh, we had a signed estimate. I'm assuming that works progressing, but there was also an issue you're pointing to. Roof's done, but I know there was an issue about grass and weeds. I've heard from yeah. their attorney that that was, in essence, getting worked on. Yes, I would agree with that. I did take pictures with Corey on Sunday, as uh, I indicated to the council last meeting. Um, I do have pictures, and I apologize. I haven't had time to get them out to the rest of the council yet. But I would agree that there has been some work going on. With that being said, there's still, in my opinion at least, plenty of work that needs to be done. I will get those pictures out so everybody can kind of make a decision on their own of what that looks like and what is the certificate of release it's for the building permit for the roof it just means that it is complete 
Okay, so the roof's taken care of. Uh -huh. So he says. I mean, he just brought me that, so. Okay. You say I hadn't touched it since when I was there Sunday, so. Okay, well, he got a certificate of relief, release from the Marshall County, you know, and he said that it was because the roof is done. And he showed me the figure of 19, well, some thousand dollars. And he said that's what it cost him, so. I haven't been by there since Sunday, so I can't speak to well, I would leave it here that if there needs to be any further steps taken, let's be specific about what they are, and then I can communicate those to uh, Andy Perkins is his attorney's name. But I would recommend, obviously, tonight. We don't know what's going on one way or the other, so there's not much we can do. But I would say let's have representative of the council, uh, code enforcement, whoever, take a look. And if we're, we're good, we can close it. If not, there's more things that need to be done, then let's let him know. But I, I think it's appropriate to say that he's responded and, and he's done some things here that we're requesting of him. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I, like I said, Sunday, I don't believe anything was done to the roof. As a matter of fact, I've seen a hole in the station board still. So, um, but that's not saying something hadn't been done between now and then. So I'll just bring this back to the next <coughs> meeting and. Hopefully somebody can give an update as to where things stand with the other issues that were are concerned about the weeds and the vegetation. Yeah, and I will get those pictures out to the rest of the council um, yet here in the next couple of days and we can go from there. Okay. So. The other thing I I started to look into a little bit about the, the discussion we had last time about chickens and then turned into kind of animals in general. And I'm not I'm the last guy that's going to want to say, hey, let's have a workshop, but unfortunately, I think we need to have a workshop <laughs> because there's things when I look through the, it's the zoning ordinance, I call it land use development code, but it's really the zoning ordinance versus the town council, um, and based on our discussions, I'm not really clear exactly what the objective is here from the council because you do control both of those governing doctrines, and we do want to make those consistent, but I I think we're going to have to put a little more time thought into this. Um, when I look at our land use matrix in terms of in a two mile jurisdiction, I, I see property that's zoned ag and animal production or even limited use animal production is a special use, which I can't believe would be the intent. Um, and, and so maybe I'm mistaken, but again, I think it's something that we need to take a little better look at before we just go have me rewrite this, that, and the other. Um, I think it'd be good to get a, a real good feel for what you guys want to do. I'm not saying it has to be the next meeting, um, but it is something I think we need to look at this a little more. We discussed more that last close. night, thank you, Commissioner. Some so of the stuff, what we're talking about. Yeah. Streamlining it, I guess you want to call it. Yes. We discussed that last night. But we were waiting on what you just said. <laughs> well, and, and again, I don't, I'd rather tackle all of it instead of piecemeal it, right. and we keep finding little bits and pieces, but I'd rather get a better view of it from where things are as I see it. Um, and again, I can point out, not just chickens, but I, again, a guy that's, you know, a mile and a half out of town, he decides to buy 20 acres, it says animal production is a special use, which means he has to go in front of a Planning Commission to get an approval to do that, which I can't believe was the I, intent. I thought that was just for CFOs and that. It's yeah. not. No, that's my point. Okay. That was the general intent when the book was written. I do know that. Yeah, and last time we updated it, pardon, right after the moratorium, is that what you're talking about? Nothing to do really with the no, moratorium. No, it, it was in production before the moratorium, but... Correct. You know, we used the moratorium to try and install, but um, we, we were trying to, it actually came up after the thing on 18th Road. Mm -hmm. um, the, yeah, but this was, you know, I mean, our when we did the zoning ordinance and adopted that, it was supposed right. to be a comprehensive, hey, this is the way we like it, and when I really look at that, I, I see some things that are like, I don't think that was what was intended. So again, I think we need to 
maybe just take a look at that again. It might be a good idea to have Chuck involved with that, so I'm not sure. Well, I'm just going to ask, Derek, do you feel that this is something that we should probably tackle in a special meeting for just that purpose instead of the one we normally do for a time? I'm asking, it take longer than an hour to do? I'm, I'm kind of gathering. Should we plan like another night or we well, can spend some time? I guess I guess I would say this. I think the first step is to point out kind of some of the issues and problems. I don't expect solutions right then and there necessarily. I think it may take some time to think those through. And so, unfortunately, I'm envisioning that it may take a little bit of time, effort, and work and meetings. I think the first one would be kind of like, hey, look at what we got. Everybody else look at this too. And is that really what we intended? Is that way we want to have things? And again, not just for chickens, but for... I was thinking that when we did that, we did the special use, as you were saying, that that was our intent too. If it was already there, they weren't affected. But anything other than somebody already established would be affected. Well, that's a grandfathering issue, and, and that may well be the case. Okay, if they're already there, well, we've got to leave them alone. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, again, the guy that buys a piece of property that's a mile and a half outside of town, mm -hmm. it's zoned ag, mm -hmm. and it's just, say, bare vacant ground. He builds a house and says, I want to have, I want to have five pigs and two cows. There should have, I thought we did that and put a stipulation on the numbers. It's a special use. Correct. And again, he's he's not in the town corporate limits. Correct. Okay, so we don't look at the town code of ordinances, but we look at the zoning ordinance and we see right. that an agricultural within that two mile is a special mm -hmm. use. So he's got to come before the planning commission to get approval to have mm -hmm. five pigs and two cows or whatever he wants to do. I'm almost positive that was the, that's what, I, I mean, I really thought that was it because we 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 knew that we had a handful of farmers already within a two mile area that had X amount of animals, and so we we did that for that reason. And that may be the case. And if the council says no, leave it alone. That's just what we wanted. Okay, it just to be honest, surprised me when I saw that. I thought the word production was where we decided that that meant capo or stepo. You know, because it was a production, not just a regular farm. You know, it's not just somebody goes out buys, you know, three cows and two chickens and whatever. Well, in, so in any case, those that you shouldn't just use production as a generalized term for a CFO or a CFO. CFO. Those shouldn't be stated as CFOs or CFOs. Well, and they're. It shouldn't be a generalized you know, production. That yeah. production be anything. We're rather not getting into all of it tonight. Yeah. So I think, again, we need to probably have a meeting about it, but there's animal production limited. Okay, which is a smaller scale operation, but even that is a special use, and that's what I'm, I guess I'm getting at, is a, even a guy that wants one cow. So, but we well, guys want to think you can put enough stuff together for us to take a quick look at to the next one uh, this month, the workshop, Derek. Okay. I mean, I'm just basically. At least give us a place to start. We, the way I'm hearing it, what I'm hearing tonight is, you know, we may have to involve more than just this council. We, you know, it sounds like planning commission may need to involve some in this, possibly. And yeah, I, I just, I was a little bit, again, kind of surprised when I saw that. I was like, I wasn't sure that's what was intended. It would be surprising, but if that's what the council wants, or the planning commission and the council, okay. Um, but then we also still have to tackle what do we fix about chicken specifically? Well, again, I'll stick to my original statement from weeks ago that we need to make sure both of our books are in cohesion with each other, which they are not right now. Right. And that's, to me, that's our first goal is to get things unified and then we'll worry about chickens. All right. The next. Let's just plan to do that, uh, if that's right with everybody else at the next meeting at our workshop. Uh, we'll go over whatever Derek brings us and make a decision where to go with it from there. What time do we want to? Uh, six. Six. Oh. six. The other two things that I have are really the next items of business 
under old business. Do you want me to go ahead and tackle those? Yes, please. Okay. I'm going to start with the Deerfield Estates, and this is basically this is a transfer of real estate from the town of Argus. This are, these are all the individual lots. It's not the roads. It's not any of the basically. I think there's a um, retention pond area. These are only the lots that are proposed to be transferred to Redevelopment Commission. In order to do that, we don't have to, there's no money changing hands. Uh, we don't have to advertise for bids or anything like that, but we do have to do two resolutions, one from the council saying that we propose to uh, have a, a deed that would transfer those lots, and then there's also a deed from the part of, I'm sorry, a resolution from the part of the Redevelopment Commission that says we accept the transfer of these parcels of real estate. Redevelopment meets next Tuesday, and I anticipate that they would execute their resolution, but then there's the resolution for the council to say, we want to go ahead and do this along with the deed. Um, I think that was a part of the packet. Yes. And yeah, that's level. Yeah. That one. No, this was his parks department. It's 2022-11, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The resolution to transfer the lot. Sure. And there should be a deed attached to that. If not, I've, I've got it here. I need not have that probably attached. The only deed I have says park department on it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. our next one. Mm -hmm. They're identical. You want to handle this now? Need a motion to pass resolution number 2022 11, a resolution of the Argus Town Council approving the transfer of real property. I'll make the motion. Second it. A motion and second to pass the resolution number 2022-11. All those favor say aye. 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 Nays? The motion passes. Okay. It is set up and it does authorize uh, Randy to sign the deed. Um, that's how the signature is set up as well. So I would just propose we would have him sign that. Okay. And he, you, he's out of town for about a week. But you have it. Yeah. Okay. Derek, do you want to sign this copy or your copy? The resolution. If you've got you 11 signed. typed, then go ahead and sign yours. I just hand wrote in 11 on mine and I made some notes on it. Okay. Let's stay signed the resolution and it needs to be signed. You can get it back to me and I can get it recorded. Okay. Or, or you can do it either yeah, way. Yeah, okay. Guys, the next thing that's on the agenda, it says quit claim deed, and yeah, it should be quit, but it's quit claim deed for downtown square. And this was kind of a learning thing for me. I'm just going to take one of these and pass it down. It's not the easiest to read, but it's basically the GIS beacon. Uh, print out there of a map of the downtown square area and obviously this was years ago but you can see there's two parcels up there that border Walnut Street that I put a P mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those are already owned by the park mm -hmm. there are there's a parcel to the west of that where it says ARC that's Argus Redevelopment Commission that's owned by them the one immediately to the south is owned by the Redevelopment Commission mm -hmm. and then there's two parcels below that are both owned by the town Right now in the picture that you see, or the photograph there, um, there's a parking lot and then basically a grassy vacant area below that. Those are both two parcels that are owned by the town. It's my understanding that the town is to deed those two parcels to the Parks Department and also for the Redevelopment Commission to deed their two parcels to the Park Department so that we kind of have a a uniform ownership there of those it'll be six parcels of real estate all of which would be called or referred to as the downtown square um, and that's somewhat to also meet some grant requirements as I understand it um, yes I think this has just been our thought from the beginning this will be another park property mm -hmm. so, you in the parking lot yeah I mean because it mm -hmm. the upkeep's going to be obviously the town anyway so there's not really a difference uh, it's just semantics. The main, I mean, I, without saying what the main, just having it in park hands changes a few things, if anything would ever need done. 
But I think that the parking lot should probably be under the parcel just for liability reasons, or if they have the farmer market stuff in that. I mean, it, oh, just to have too many it's entities involved, and we've got one it's area, the other town on top of the right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so I just wanted you guys to be clear about which two parcels we're talking about here. There's again another resolution and another deed um, that would effectuate the transfer of those two parcels to the park department. And again, there's a resolution for the park department to say we accept the transfer of those two parcels. Uh, once a deed signed, we get it recorded, and then that's that's it. We also have in the works, just so you know, um, I've already prepared the resolutions for the transfer of the two redevelopment commission lots to the park department as well. I'll give that to you, Paul. Oh. We meet on the two. I already did. Yeah. I think. <clears throat> yeah. Oh. I said he sent me the other ones too. Okay. We meet on the 18th. Yeah. I met with Paul and I don't really matter, but I said that. Well, I am missing the resolution for this one. Yeah, this is the one that Derek <coughs> said that he was going to bring forward. Um, okay. I gave you the deed, not the resolution. So. There is a resolution, and it's just handwritten in there 2022 20, 13. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the same resolution as Deerfield, just different properties. We have resolution number 2022-13, a resolution of the Argus Town Council approving the transfer of real property. Do I have a motion to pass? I don't need a motion. I got a motion and a second to pass resolution number 2022-13. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nays? Zero. Motion passed. And again, I set that deed up for the signature of Randy, so. Mm -hmm. I'll get Randy. Thank you. Do we need to, do you have this or do I need to pass this down to you for Randy? He has that. Well, I can print another one. So you want to keep it, that's fine. That is all I had to report. Make a motion to accept the attorney report. I second it. A motion to second to approve the attorney report. All the fair say aye. 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 Nay. Zero. Motion passes. Old business. Any old business? Amen. Got a question for Jamie. How are we on our dump truck and pole truck? I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't heard it now. I doubt I will for a couple months at least on that dump truck, so. Anybody else have anything? You need to space it out a little bit more. It's New business. Resolution 2022-12 Altium, Altium Packaging CF1. So I got a call from the MCDDC that said that um, Altium Packaging had sent their CF1s directly to the auditor's office and did not give it to the town. They were supposed to have it to us by May 15th. Um, the auditor then denied the request. So I got a call from Greg at the MCEDC asking if we would forgive their error um, in that they brought it to the county rather than to us. So I had to come up with a resolution to state that you would let them, what, let them you know. do it? Yeah, so I had to, um, well, I, I plagiarized one, so, <laughs> but um, I had to come up with a, a resolution to say that you as the Argus Town Council realizes that they made this mistake and you will still accept the um, tax abatement for this year and then I have to file it again with the auditor's office. Is this all nice and legal this way, Derek? Well, I mean, here's the deal. It's the CF1 that should have been turned in by May 15. Apparently they turned it into the wrong entity without getting it here first. I get it. The, I mean, it, it's not always clear about, they filled out the form and you can see that it's dated May 10, but they turned it into the wrong entity. Um, I think this is year two, is that it's, correct? 
This is supposed to be year two, but they did not claim last year. So we'll see how that goes. I think regardless, it's year two, you know, yeah. whether they did or didn't claim. But okay. at the end of the day, um, yeah, I mean, we can deny it, but I don't. I think the objective is let's get business in here, let's get new equipment, let's get jobs, and that's what this helps to do. This was a simple mistake. So do we even need a resolution? We have to have the I resolution. I think we do. This has to go to the assessor's office once it's passed so they can recognize the event. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion to pass resolution number 2022-12, waiving noncompliance regarding time, timely filing for Form CF1 for Alton Packaging, LP. Second. <laughs> I got a motion and a second. Pass resolution number 2022-12. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nays? Zero. Motion passes. Unanimous. <coughs> these are just the forms then? Do we have to do anything with these? Uh, Randy will sign, you know, once you guys have, you know, he'll sign that it's in compliance and then I'll take them to the auditor's office. It's really the CF1 form. Yeah. Yeah. There, Sean, and it's the second page where it says signature of authorized member, and then Lisa attests can, it. Can Sean sign it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sean, you can sign it. You want me to sign it? Just where it says authorized member and that they're in compliance. If you want, have, we can do it after, and Derek can show you. Yeah, I've not seen it. Okay. That's fine. Okay, next up, I believe we have okay. allowance of debts to be written off due to bankruptcy collection fee under the minimum amount. Lisa? Yes. Okay. So, um, Lori has done these about every six months. We're down to minimal collecting now. Um, she's collected about everything that she can, I know it's not on here. Um, she's collected about all that she can collect. Um, so these are either the person died and we have to write it off or the collection agency has collected and they have charged a fee and so we have to write off a portion of their balance due to that or we just could not collect or anything under we have a threshold of, i think it's 25 dollars anything under 25 dollars we're not going to spend the time and energy to try to collect but i will tell you she did put on there i think we've collected something like sixteen thousand dollars to date through trex and through our collection agency um, she's done a great job doing that and Trex has really helped out. I and mean, we're talking to people that have owed us money from like the 80s. <laughs> so we were able to go way back and, and collect them. And Trex, um, according to the um, vendor that I talked to at our last clerk's training, they're trying to get federal permission to go after people's federal taxes now. So if you owe a municipality or somebody a non a municipality or a school something like that um, you would be able to use tracks to track them down so now you won't it won't matter if you move out of the state of indiana um, they'll still be able to once that gets federally passed so i have a motion to pass this for a total of 161 dollars and 48 cents of debt write-off Second. I have a motion a second to pass that, that right off of 161.48. All those bears say aye. 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 Nay. Zero. Motion passes. Angie, how did you always start out first, higher, last, sign? <laughs> we learned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A really, really nice person sitting next to me when I first started. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, it looks like we're up to claims now, everyone. Before we go to claims, I should have jumped in on citizens' input, but this weekend out at the park, uh, fire department's hosting uh, uh, Slide the Hill. So there'll be, uh, we had a, a local farmer donate uh, the plastic to cover the sledding hill, and so it will be soaked up in water for the, for the community to come play. That's the best thing I've heard all day. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be so great. I'm going to fly so weekend. far. <laughs> this is going to be excellent. We did it last year. You're saying the Dow Jones needs more COVID. It was, <laughs> so it was, it was great. Um, and I want to throw this out there. Uh, I just, I have to deal with this, but you're non for profits now. The state of Indiana, I believe it was in June, passed the law that any non-for-profit that made over $20,000 must now collect sales tax. So when you see these non-for-profits out there selling their chicken, doing their fish dinners, doing their whatever, if they make over $20,000 a year, they have to pay sales tax. So take it into consideration that they're not doing it, the state's pushing it. So it's really reaching into monies that they are actually turning back into the community. Not that they're keeping it for themselves, it's all, all for the community. So, just to let everybody out there know, that's why uh, prices are up. Pretty shady, if you ask me. George. Yes. This is a fire thing next weekend. 13th. Yes, next Sorry, week. next weekend, 13th. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm that's the same day as they have the left city walk as well. It's yep. That'll be in the park. Yep. Sean, I have one more. I just want to see the reporters put scratch. Okay, so, sure. <laughs> so we talked about the Christmas party, the employee Christmas party last time, and we said we'd make a decision this meeting. Um, I honestly didn't look very far. Um, by the time we hire janitors or, you know, I, I mean, are you going to make the employees set up and clean up and do all that stuff, on, you know, for their own... Just employee you. appreciation dinner. Yeah, just me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I would just like permission to have it back at Christo's for one more year. If you guys want to start looking around, I understand you want to keep it local, but by the time you hire bartenders and caterers and all of that, it's really hard to do that. So I gave this quite a bit of thought, Lisa, after our last meeting, to be honest with you, and I just kind of jotted some things down. You know, I would love to keep it in the community. I really would. But as I just put some rough figures down, I, I don't think that we would be doing the town's people justice to spend that much extra money just to have something we could get for half of the price in Plymouth. I mean, we're still within the county. The county is our seat. And I get it. I'd love to stay in the community, but I feel that we should go back to Crystal's myself. So. I mean, we didn't even have to have liability insurance and all this yes. other stuff if we had a bar tender. You know, I mean, it's it gets quite when you start adding everything up. So, or the ACDC could host it for us. Yeah. I move that we just do the Christmas party. Just, or, uh, appreciation party. I'm still calling Christmas party because that's what I feel about it. But uh, for the employees as we did last year at Christmas, if, if they can get us in. And yeah, motion a second. A motion second to hold the employee appreciation dinner at Christos again this year. All those in favor say aye. 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 And A, zero, motion passed unanimous. Claims. Sure, it's nice having the claims the right direction. No kidding. About passed out. <laughs> you left, so I guess. It's so nice when you have people that know how to use computers. <laughs> I don't, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you should have. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time she's been right.
right all year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait for least until so the, the, the claims are four hundred eighty-seven thousand eight hundred forty-three dollars and twenty-one cents, and they run from July sixteenth to August first. And these meetings that are August first, these are very hard to get the claims done for. I just want to let you know because you have to close out a month and try to start a new month in, in a day. So. <laughs> Second and fourth meetings would be great. Do you have a motion to pass the claims for 716 to 81, totaling $487,843.21? I make that motion. Second. And a motion and a second to pass the claims for 716 to 81. All those favor say aye. 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 Nays. No nays. Motion passes. <laughs> before we do that, before we do yeah, that, we know. I would like to express condolences, uh, not only for myself, but on behalf of the town as acting president tonight, um, for the loss of the lives today of Jackie Walorski and her staff and the other lady that was involved in the accident. That was a terrible thing that took four lives today, and I just want to let the families know that they're in our thoughts and prayers. So. Now I will take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. A motion second to adjourn. All those favor say aye. 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 Nays. Nays, of course. Aye.